Welcome to Tips to Avoid Zoom Bombing. What is Zoom Bombing? Well, I have gotten a definition by a Dan Gooden. He offered this on uh, April 2nd of 2020 uh, in an article called Security Tips Every Teacher and Professor Needs to Know About Zoom Right Now. And his definition is the phenomenon of trolls intruding into other people's meetings for the sole purpose of harassing attendees, usually by bombarding them with racist or sexually explicit images or statements. So what can happen is an uninvited guest can come into a Zoom meeting room, take over the microphone or the share screen or the annotation tools and put up content that nobody wants to see. Uh, there are some steps we can take to avoid this happening to us. The first thing we can do is don't announce meetings on social media or other public outlets. So I don't think this is a problem for us. We typically only share our meeting information inside D2L or using D2L email. That is a closed system. So uh, shouldn't be a problem, but it does, it does bear mentioning. And then there are some things that you can update in your settings, and I will point those out in the actual settings here in just a second, but let me review them. Um, use schedule meeting and make sure meetings are password protected. This might be a little different than what you had been doing before by simply copying and pasting your room address into news. Um, we are now recommending that you use schedule meeting, and we'll review that in just a second. Carefully control screen sharing, disable the join before host setting, use the waiting room option to admit participants, and lock your meeting after beginning. So let me transition now to my Zoom setting screen and we will look at how to put these things into practice. All right, so I'm on my zoom.us uh, screen. I've got the address in the address bar there, zoom.us. I'm already logged in, so on the top right, I can click on my account. And this brings up my account information and a menu down the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, the first thing that I want to point out is you can get to meetings in a couple of ways. You can click on this uh, meetings word right here, or you can schedule a meeting by going up here to the menu bar and clicking schedule a meeting. The good thing is you can schedule a recurring meeting, which is what a lot of us will have with our uh, classes going online or virtual uh, you can title it whatever you want put a description in there uh, you want to put the date of the first meeting in and how long it will last and then if it's a recurring meeting like most of ours are for the next few weeks go ahead and select recurring meeting how often you want it to occur and when you want it to either end by an end date or after a certain number of occurrences And then here is where you can choose to require a meeting password. Uh, you can make the password whatever you want it to be. Uh, it does come pre-populated, pre so you just make sure you make a note of that and share that password with your students. When you are finished, you'll click Save, and you'll have all of your information ready to share with your students. Okay, once you've clicked save, this is the information populated on your screen. You'll notice that uh, your meeting time is in. If it's recurring, you've got that information there. Uh, your meeting ID, again, is going to be unique. It's going to be different from what it was before. This is for an abundance of caution. And you will have your meeting password. Now, the question is, how do you share this information with your students? Go over here and click copy the invitation that's over here on the right side of the screen click the 
click that phrase copy the invitation all of this information will be populated and you can simply click this button again copy meeting invitation and you'll see the message the green message copied to the clipboard um, then you can open up d2l you can paste this information in a news item or you can paste this information into an email and send it out to your students all right now let's talk about settings we want to carefully control our screen sharing uh, that control is actually a little ways down the page i am going to be scrolling quite a bit till i get to the screen sharing area i have my toggle switch switched on because I want screen sharing to happen in my classroom. I like to, in my virtual classroom, I like to share slides. I like to show a web page now and then. So screen sharing is important to have on, but notice that you can limit it to the host being the only person who has the ability to share the screen. Now let's say you're in a meeting and you want to give somebody else permission to share their screen. You absolutely can do that by um, putting uh, hovering over their name in the participants list and you can assign them as a co-host and then they'll be able to share as well but this is the setting that we want host only we also want to disable the join before host option that's uh, up towards the top so this would allow participants to join the meeting before the host arrives we're, we're going to turn that off as you can see i've got my toggle switch turned to off you can use the waiting room uh, that's actually lower down here i've got my waiting room turned on so that attendees uh, when it's time to join the meeting they uh, can't actually go into the virtual meeting room they have to be let in by the host that would be you um, one at a time so that you know exactly who you are letting into the meeting room and then the last thing that we can do is we can lock our meetings after the meeting begins. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, this is inside of a meeting room. Uh, this is my meeting room and I'm the only participant. Uh, but I've got my participants list open because this is where I would go to lock the meeting room. Uh, I go down to the bottom of the participants list and I see the more, the word more with an action arrow next to it. I click that action arrow and that opens up some options and one of those options is to lock the meeting and that prevents anyone else from coming into the meeting room the last thing that you can do um, that i haven't mentioned before is you can actually hover over somebody's name if they're being disruptive and you can uh, it'll give you the option to remove them so that's always an option as well all right, let us know your thoughts about um, keeping rooms safe during this time of online education. Reach out to us at online.learning at nscc.edu. Thank you.